Captain Britain, biography. Brian Braddock, Captain Britain of Earth 616, son of Sir James Braddock and Elizabeth Braddock, brother Jamie Braddock, twin brother of Elizabeth Betsy Braddock, alias Psylocke, and husband of Megan. First appearance, Captain Britain, issue 1, first series, Marvel UK. First United States appearance, Marvel Team-Up, issue 65, first series. Occupation, nuclear scientist, former monarch of Otherworld. Origin. Brian Braddock grew up in Malden, England, the son of respected academic parents. Leading a normal, if not partially sheltered and privileged life, Brian and his siblings did not know the fact that their father actually came from another dimension called Otherworld. Brian was the quieter and more scholarly brother to the older, extravagant racing car driver Jamie and his equally flamboyant tomboy twin sister Elizabeth, who was nicknamed Betsy. Very intelligent, Brian was a graduate physics student at London Thames University, ahead of his age and peers. While visiting home when he was 21 years of age, he met a young woman named Valerie at the local pub. He stayed outside his home, Braddock Manor, with her in the car, not caring that his parents were possibly inside, waiting for him. Suddenly, without warning, there was an explosion inside the building and he learned that his parents had died. Electrocuted in what appeared to be a freak accident with the computer Professor Braddock himself had built. Brian blamed himself for his parents' death and became even more of a loner. Captain Britain, First Series, Issue 14 To try and forget the loneliness, he took on a job as an assistant at the Dark Moor Research Center, a top-secret nuclear complex in the Moors, during university break. The complex was attacked by Joshua Stragg, also known as the Reaver, and his men who wanted to kidnap the top nuclear scientists assembled there. Brian hurried to the location on his motorbike, hoping to help. Strag's men followed him, and a confused Brian drove off the cliffs. The fall should have killed him. Instead, the badly hurt Brian was called by strange voices, welcoming him with the ghostly forms of an unnamed old man and a young woman, who called herself the Lady of the Northern Skies. They offered Brian the choice to become a hero and beckoned him to choose between two objects embedded in stones on peril of his mortal soul, the Sword of Might or the Amulet of Right. While Strag and his men were closing in on him, Brian had to choose fast. Instinctively, he chose Right. He was a scholar, not a killer. So he chose the amulet and was transformed into Captain Britain, a champion of the British Isles. He was also given a weapon, his quarterstaff. Nudged by dark forces he wasn't aware of, the Nether Gods, and which would later vex the captain, Strag grabbed the sword and was given powers as well. The newly transformed Captain Britain succeeded in his first trial and defeated his foe. Captain Britain, first series, issues 1 and 2, Hulk comic, issue 32. Brian Braddock then returned to his life in London at university where college beauty Courtney Ross was trying to get Brian's affection, much to the jealousy of a fellow student, Jack O'Tanner, who strongly disliked Brian and considered him a weakling. Brian began his crime-fighting career as Captain Britain with gusto. He foiled a bank robbery by the henchmen of the elusive crime lord, Vixen, and battled the dangerous former scientist turned supervillain Hurricane, another unwitting pawn of the Nether Gods who had caused the accident that it gave Hurricane his powers to begin with for the fate of London. During those adventures, he also made an enemy of Scotland Yard Chief Inspector Di Thomas. Thomas harbored an irrational hatred for superheroes, as his wife had died as a bystander of a battle between super beings in the United States of America. He resented Captain Britain as he saw him as a symbol for that American madness now infecting Britain as well. As a result, Captain Britain's relationship with the police had its difficulties as he was often on the run from the authorities. Captain Britain, first series, issues 3 through 7, Hulk comic, issue 32. One day, Brian was visited by his twin sister, Betsy, who had asked him to return to Braddock Manor with her, as there had been an attempt on the life of their older brother, Jamie. As they flew to Malden in Betsy's private plane, the young woman soon found herself under psychic attack, seeing monsters everywhere, and Brian had to save the both of them from a certain plane crash. Moments later, he was attacked by a strange man with psychic powers, 
who made him live through hellish hallucinations. Brian fought his way free and was found by Jamie, who explained the villain was named Lord Sign, who had psychic powers, was trying to kill him, and already had the neighboring villages under his control. Controlling Betsy with his mind, the villain used her to strike at them. To save his brother's life, Brian revealed himself as Captain Brian and stopped Betsy from killing Jamie. Captain Brian, first series, issues 8 through 10. Brian and Jamie brought Betsy to a hospital to recover from her possession, and Brian left for the countryside to face Sion as Captain Britain once more. But the telepathic villain used the villagers he possessed on him. Brian would have been burned to death if he hadn't learned in the process that his quarterstaff, given to him with his uniform, was capable of protecting a force field. He then faced Sion again and won, not so much because of what he did, but because of the source of science powers, the Braddock's secret computer was briefly shut off by the charwoman, Emma Collins, who was cleaning the laboratory. Captain Britain, first series issues 11 through 13. Captain Britain followed the trail back to the computer his father had built, and when he confronted the machine, he learned that it was sentient and had murdered his parents deliberately. The computer insulted him with holographic images about his own role in his parents' death, as he had spent his time with Valerie instead of returning home. But Brian got over his feelings of anger against himself and managed to beat the computer's physical manifestation, a holographic image calling itself Mastermind. Captain Britain, first series, issues 14 and 15. As Captain Britain carried the injured Emma Collins outside the mansion, the police were waiting for him. Among them died Thomas, who intended to capture and unmask him. However, at that point, Captain America arrived, who had come on a mission from S.H.I.E.L.D. After a fight due to misunderstanding, Captain Britain learned that the Red Skull and his neo-Nazis were working on establishing a fourth Reich in Britain, and wanted to use the brighter computer for their evil ambitions. The two heroes fought the Skull's men. Unfortunately, the Red Skull's people had infiltrated Strike, the British version of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Strike flew a bombing mission on Braddock Manor, while the Red Skull teleported away with the computer components he needed, and the two heroes seemingly perished in the bombing. Captain Britain, First Series, Issues 15 through 19. In truth, Captain Britain had saved them by leading the other man to a bomb shelter. Eventually, the two captains freed the British Prime Minister, who was being held as a hostage by the Red Skull's men, and together with Nick Fury and Lance Hunter, the commanders of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Strike, they saved London from the germ bomb the Skull had planted at Big Ben. In the aftermath of the crisis, Hunter offered Captain Britain to work for Strike, but he declined the offer. Captain Britain, first series, issues 20-27. through 27. Life went on and soon Captain Brian faced Lord Hawk, a formerly mild-mannered professor who was now terrorizing London with a deadly toy hawk. In the process, Captain Brian was badly injured and fell into a coma. Captain Brian, first series, issues 27 through 32. Actually, his spirit rose to another plane of reality, where after a fight with a fire-breathing monster, he met two beings on Otherworld who now introduced themselves as Merlin and his daughter Roma. They saw him as an heir to the British heroes like King Arthur of old. On their behalf, he fought a monster as a test to see if he was worthy of the powers bestowed upon him. He was successful and his quarterstaff was exchanged by Merlin for the more potent Star Scepter, which now enabled him to fly. However, unplanned, a demon-like being named Nikon, who was also seemed to be in cohorts with the Nether Gods, attacked them, coveting the Star Scepter. Merlin and Captain Brian managed to beat him at the expense of Merlin being unable to send Brian back. Fortunately, Captain Brian managed to reconnect his astral body with his real body self through sheer willpower. Captain Brian, first series, issues 33 through 37. Captain Brynn had even more adventures after that. He even worked together with Di Thomas on some, such as when they had saved the brainwashed Queen of England from an African dictator, but their mutual dislike of each other had persisted. Captain Brynn, first series, issues 37 through 39, Super Spider-Man and Captain Brynn, issues 231 through 232. In one case, he had to save his love interest, Courtney, from an immortal satanist who wanted to make her his bride. 
Between adventures and possibly after that one, he must have told her of his secret identity, and the two of them finally became a couple. Super Spider-Man and Captain Britain, issues 235 through 238. One of the most dangerous foes Captain Britain faced was the ruthless assassin, Slaymaster, who had killed several famous people and had managed to frame Captain Britain for those murders. Eventually, Captain Britain confronted him and the villain was seemingly defeated. Super Spider-Man and Captain Britain, issues 243 to 247. After clearing his name, Brian Braddock traveled to New York City as a foreign exchange student and ended up being the roommate of Peter Parker, also known as Spider-Man. After an obligatory fight because of a misunderstanding, the two heroes became friends and the more experienced Spider-Man mentored Brian a bit. Spider-Man also gets the connection between Braddock and Cap, but not vice versa. Unknown to Brian, the European Magia wanted Captain Brian out of the way and already had narrowed down his secret identity to about 50 young men, Braddock being among them. As he was the only one abroad, they had asked a foreign assassin to kill him, the eccentric Arcade. The assassin had abducted Courtney Ross and later Captain Brian and even accidentally Spider-Man and had them play for their lives and Courtney's in his murder world. Thanks to Spider-Man's ingenuity, they had found a way out, where the police had informed them they had found the Magia's killers. The other men were safe, the two Magia agents were dead, and Braddock's secret identity was kept secure. Marvel Team Up, first series, issue 65 and 66. Brian chose to stay in America, though his British manners put a stress on the relationship between him and Peter. In a bar, Brian got into a fight with some Euro trash students who were bad-mouthing their host country. Later, when Captain Brian ran into them again, it turned out they were actually superpower villains. In the battle, Captain Brian accidentally hurt one young woman badly and ran away as a result. Peter Parker, who had witnessed the entire incident as Spider-Man, threw him out and told him to get his life in order. Apparently, Peter's words had some effect, for Brian later mentioned to have paid for the girl's hospital bills. Excalibur, first series, issue 53. On his way back to the United Kingdom, Brian's plane began to experience a sudden fuel loss and engine trouble when it was close to Cornwall. Brian sensed that an evil force was behind that, trying to get at him. He figured the only way of possibly saving his fellow passengers was by leaving the plane, as those forces were naturally after him. Not caring about his own life, he jumped into the ocean. Brian was adrift in the cold ocean for hours until he washed the shore. Then a voice called to him and he was shown a vision of a three oddly shaped stones and a light rising behind them. Hulk comic issues 42 and 43. He pushed the vision aside like a dream and soon fell into an amnesiac state, possibly because of both the nether god's attack on him and the rigors of fighting for his life in the ocean. Brian stayed a recluse in a cave in Cornwall for over a year waiting though he himself didn't know for what, Hulk comic issue 1. Someone did eventually come for him, the Black Knight, who had been sent by Merlin to find his other champion, which was attacked by the evil wizard Mordred. With his winged horse, Valiar, hurt, the knight found shelter in a cave, which he found was also inhabited by Braddock. Brian attacked the intruder, and the Black Knight was surprised that the stranger was able to block the attack of his ebony blade with his staff. Recognizing the runes on the stranger's staff and amulet as Merlin's mystic runes, the Black Knight realized that this was the hero Merlin had sent him to find. While not lifting the fog that had clouded his mind, Brian did not recognize the name Merlin. He stopped fighting, dimly recalling his vision, and was willing to talk. Soon, the two men found themselves fighting by each other's side. Hulk comic issues 1 through 6. They were then joined by a stranger named Vortigan. Brian and the Black Knight slowly realized what war they were a part of, one instigated and started by the Dark Gods of Netherworld, ruled by Necromen, who wanted to defeat the waning forces of Otherworld. Fighting for Otherworld were, among others, the six Proud Walkers, Pathfinders, men of powers who perceived the past of the world, whereas the six walkers, as well as Mordred the Evil, and even more creatures, had thrown in their lot with another world. Vortigan had come to lead the two heroes to Otherworld, where the secret in Brian's head, his mysterious vision, 
was desperately needed. Again and again, they were attracted by Mordred's creatures, where finding few allies themselves, such as the feral elf Moondog and his people. Hulk comic, issues 7 through 12. Eventually, the heroes had to split up, each pressing on missions of their own. Captain Brain was to continue the path onto the gates of Otherworld, whereas the elves were to take him. Hulk comic, issue 16. An Elfian ship carried Brian to a strange island, where he was warned by spectral beings of Netherworld not to open the gates of Otherworld, as death was hanging above him. Brian ignored their warning and opened the heavy gates afterward using a star scepter as a key. However, out of the gates came the White Rider, a hooded skeleton on a horse who attacked him. Captain Brian fought bravely and actually managed to gain the upper hand, but the arrival of Black Knight and Moondog distracted Brian long enough for the White Rider to impale and kill him. Hulk comic issues 20 and 21. Hoping that Merlin might help, the Black Knight transported Captain Britain's corpse to Otherworld and fought his way through more Netherworld hordes into the presence of the powerful wizard. While the knight protected Merlin's body and Brian's against all physical dangers, the wizard sent his mind into the void to find the soul of the fallen hero. He saw that Captain Britain's soul was heading straight for the entrance of Netherworld into the jaws of death. It took all of Merlin's power and ability to free Brian from the currents of death and reunite his soul with his body, which he then healed. Hulk comic, issues 22 through 29. Together, Merlin and Captain Britain recall Brian's memories up to and including the pivotal point where Brian was attacked on the plane. Merlin informed him that two great forces, good and evil, had been struggling for his soul and the good had won as it led him to that island and the vision. He believed that Brian had been guided by the restless spirit of King Arthur himself. Merlin had explained that Arthur was one of the greatest heroes that had held back the forces of Necroman, Lord of the Netherworld. After he died, his body had been kept in Avalon, but it was stolen by dark forces and hidden while his spirit still seems to roam aimlessly. They would have to find his tomb. With that, Merlin restored Brian as Captain Britain, once more in mind and body. Hulk comic issues 42 through 44. The heroes made their way through more perils and dangers to Camelot, once the seat of King Arthur, now in Otherworld, the last resistance against Necromen's forces. While Camelot suffered an attack from the forces of Netherworld, Brian and the Knight, secretly joined by the stowaway elf Jackdaw, left on the winged horse to find Arthur's tomb in the mists of time. They reached an ocean full of countless islands. Guided by his vision, Captain Brian found the right one. The three stones from his vision turned out to be disguised stone giants. After the heroes fought the giants, a skeletal figure in armor emerged from the ground they previously held down and healed before their eyes to become a restored King Arthur. Before heading into the final battle against Necromen alongside the Black Knight, King Arthur told Captain Brian that his work there was done and he was needed elsewhere. With that, Arthur sent the Captain and Jackdaw away. Hulk comic issues 56 through 63. While Captain Brian and Jackdaw were hurled through time and space, Captain Brian's costume and star scepter suddenly changed into a new uniform. The two friends had no time to concern themselves about Brian's new look, as their journey soon came to an end. Captain Brynn and Jackdaw arrived in a bank vault right in the middle of a robbery, which was being committed by the villains in the Alice in Wonderland look, led by gimmick villain Mad Jim Jaspers. Brian stopped the robbery and found out that he could fly in his new costume and the force field had also been integrated into it. Marvel Superheroes issue 377. Brian soon realized that they were not on his own Earth, but a parallel one. One where there was no more superheroes as they had been hunted down and killed by government officials. It was a miserable, pathetic place and he kept running into weird and bizarre things, such as a walking junk heap monster and a talking gentleman rat. More though accident than anything else, he found out that these incidents were the cause by a certain mutagenic fluid. He was then attacked by the Advent Guard, agents of the mysterious woman, Saturn, who kidnapped Jackdaw and devolved the captain into a monkey-like being. However, left alone, the monkey came into contact with a life-enhancing fluid 
and evolved back into Captain Britain, stronger and more evolved than before. Marvel Superheroes, issues 378 through 381. He attacks Saturn and her guard, and he and Jackdaw learn that she too was from another dimension. As an agent of the Dimension Development Court, she was sent to give this sad Earth the push with the life-enhancing fluid and evolve its citizens. Eventually, realizing that she was the smaller evil, Captain Britain and Jackdaw threw in their lot with Saturn. However, a few moments after the push had succeeded, the forgotten mad Jim Jasper showed his true colors. A mutant with immense reality warping powers, he threw the entire world into chaos. Marvel Superheroes issues 382 through 384 and 386. Helpless, the government decided to reactivate the Fury, a grotesque killing machine programmed to kill superheroes as they feared Captain Brin was the one to blame for the reality breaking down. Saturn and her guard withdrew, leaving Captain Brin and Jackdaw at the Fury's mercy. It killed Jackdaw, broke Brian's arm, and would have killed him as well had Jaspers, the Fury's creator, not intervened. In typical villain fashion, Jaspers explained how he was the one behind all the world's problems. Witnessing his power as twisted versions of the people Brian knew were dead were on Jasper's helicopter, Captain Brynn turned tail and ran, falling out of Jasper's helicopter and into the hero's graveyard. While on his knees as he still cried out as to why Merlin had abandoned him on this hellish godforsaken world, the Fury walked up behind him and fired a powerful energy blast at him, disintegrating the captain. Marvel Superheroes issues 387 and 388. <laughs>